in my work with my clients in Awakened Motherhood, one of the things that we use right out of the gate is the power of intention, conscious intention to shift out of a pattern that is a trauma cycle that causes overwhelm, that keeps you in fight or flight mode. And this intention will basically establish a new level of consciousness. So this is where the intention is so powerful. It's why I'm going to be talking about it today. I am so glad that you guys are coming in here. Say hello. Click the like button when you come in. We're diving into 2024 intentionally and consciously with this training to help you to know where to begin, what is a tool that you can anchor into that you can use starting today, right now, right after this live stream, to put into practice and begin to interrupt those trauma patterns, begin to break that cycle that causes that fight or flight mode, that repeating trauma response, the high stress level, the brain fog, the overthinking, the guilt spiral, the shame spiral, the um, yelling at your kids, ultimately creating funk and negativity in your relationships, in your home. And this is where kids start to really struggle when moms are stuck in these patterns. It's where kids show up with anxiety, where they struggle to make friends, where they struggle with overwhelm themselves. So we want, I'm, I'm here to change that. I'm here to rewrite that paradigm of how women do motherhood. And part of my life purpose and my mission and why I'm here with you and offering this live stream today on intention is because you don't know how powerful you are. You have probably had little glimpses of the power of your influence, of the power of your decision to change something for the better. In some areas, motherhood is like the biggest area of impact that we have been gifted. We are sitting with a huge gift and massive potential for creating beauty and joy and laughter and fun and I know for some of you feel like you're squandering that because you don't know what to do with that gift. So today I'm going to give you an incredibly powerful tool and that is how to harness your intention, how to apply, how to create and apply the power of your intention to break the cycle of trauma, of negativity in your life, to eventually break apart those trauma patterns and realize the beautiful joy that you're here to have okay so we're gonna dive in and get started now for some reason I'm not able to see your comments so I do appreciate your comments I do appreciate when you say yes I'm here and I'm all in um, drop me some clicks and some likes and some thumbs ups if you're here and you haven't said hello and commented please say hello and let me see if I can see you here and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by um, first I just want you to know you know, as you tune in here and grab a pen and paper so that you can really um, take notes and write down things that you that are new to you that you want to stick. Um, I'm going to give you today three kind of rules. I'm calling them rules of effective use of intentions. Three guidelines for being able to create an intention that's so powerful that it can really disrupt or wake you up from that negative, powerless cycle that you're stuck in when you have overwhelm, okay? So even if you're like, well, I'm not really that overwhelmed, and I mean, I love my kids, and we're happy, and we laugh, and, but, you know, usually, um, until you resolve the kind of root cause, the core of those trauma patterns, and rewire to something, it, 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 it's hard to maintain it. So you may have a flash of that, you may have a moment of relief, you may have a day that's great, but then what happens is you go back to default patterns, and then those default patterns haven't really changed. And I hear that all the time on Clarity Calls. People want to move forward, they think they might want to move forward, they're not sure yet, they want it to be easy. And it isn't easy. It takes commitment and consistency and rewire, to rewire, to, to then maintain that level of, uh, transformative healing that people get in our 12-week program it takes commitment you gotta want it you know you gotta you gotta want to feel good you gotta be ready to feel good and so this talk is for those of you who want to feel good so let's start off 
by just talking about what is intention. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who have not worked with intentions or mantra or agreements or whatever you want to call them with yourself before, I want to catch you up to speed. When people sign up with me to do the work to eliminate generational trauma and awaken motherhood and get out of overwhelm, the very first step, the very first thing that we do with them is teach them exactly how to utilize the power of their intention to shift from a very stuck pattern of anxiety or overwhelm or negativity. Then eventually that breaks the chains of generational trauma. Eventually it gets us there. But where we begin in step one is using the power of intention. Now I want to talk a little bit with you about what that means. And can you guys hear me okay? What it means is Intention is something that is different from your desire. It's not the same as desire. And, and it's also, um, another way to define intention is, it is what you've come to expect. Your intention, another way of saying that is, your intention is what you've come to expect from your life, your family, your kids, your partner, yourself. It's what you've come to expect life to be like. Your intention is something you're using all the time, all day long, and even in the night while you sleep. Your conscious, your unconscious, excuse me, is firing away from this zone of the lens you see life through. So it might be dreams about scarcity. It might be, might be fear-based catastrophic nightmares. It might be dreams about losing something. Um, all of these things are about lack and scarcity, and that's, that's really um, unprocessed, unintegrated um, trauma, the roots of that. And it can show up at night in your sleep, and it shows up all day long. So intention is something you can use for your good, or it will continue to operate as it always has, as your parents taught you, as you were passed down. Your intentions will fire either way, whether you use them consciously or whether they're firing unconsciously. Okay, so just like beliefs are always here creating your reality, your old emotional junk is always here creating your reality until you shift that. Intentions are the same way. So your intention is something that you're using all the time unconsciously. Think of it as your expectation. And it is available to be changed, rewritten, and transformed. How cool is that? This is really good news for you guys. This is good news for all of us. Intentions are here to be rewritten, to be harnessed, to be utilized, to be transformed, to be transmuted, to be upgraded, to be up-leveled, and all the things. And so um, the reason why I say it's not your desires because I really want you to get that a desire sounds like, oh, I wish I had that, or I want that, or I want to be like her. I want to be like that mom. I want to be that successful. Usually starts with I want. Um, and it's good to have desires, and we need to have desires. I do talk to a lot of people who are overwhelmed who have no idea what their desires are. So raise your hand if that's you. You have a hard time tapping into your desires, knowing how to find them, knowing even where to begin looking that's about worthiness. That means you don't feel worthy for what you want. And that's what that is. When, when you start to build your worthiness, like we do this in, in, um, in my work with clients, when you're doing this work and you begin to realize, oh my God, I am deserving. Oh my God, I am worthy. I'm so much more than I ever knew or so much more than my mom knew or so much more than I ever thought. What happens is you start hearing your desires. They start coming to the forefront. They start becoming conscious. And as you have more conscious desires, you're able to then action them and put them into intention. So let's just pretend if you don't know what your desires are yet, let's say for the sake of um, most people here who are, who are really overwhelmed or in survival mode, I want you to think about the thing that bugs you the most that you don't want to be anymore. You don't want to have it in your life anymore. You don't want to feel this way anymore. Irritable, um, short-tempered, impatient, snappy, uh, confused, brain fog, unfocused, distracted, 
overworked, underappreciated, just any pattern, anything that you're stuck in that you have not been able to shift on your own, think of that thing. And then what we're going to do is just take that thing, flip it around and make a desire out of it. My desire is to be free of irritability. Let's just keep free of irritability. Let's just keep it simple. My desire is to be free of irritability. What is that? Feeling at peace, feeling content. You might have another one. So think of what that is and then drop it in the comments. Let's have some interaction today. So my desire is to be free of whatever. Well, flip it around. What does that mean? The opposite of feeling impatient all the time is at ease, patient, understanding for my kids. Okay, drop that in the chat. All right, so your intention, you're using it all the time, unconsciously or consciously, it's running your life. It's telling you that either you're not good enough, you're expecting to hear and see evidence that you're not good enough, you're expecting to hear and see evidence that your life is a struggle and maybe you're the cause of that. Maybe you're, maybe you feel def defeated. You feel like a failure. Maybe you feel unappreciated. So you're angry and resentful about that. So the expectation, the intention is nobody appreciates me. The intention is you wake up, you had a bad night's sleep. You wake up and you go, today is going to suck. So ever happened to you? Raise your hand if that's happened to you. Terrible night's sleep. Kids woke you up, dog woke you up, whatever. Oh, my God, today is going to be terrible. You wake up, you're already irritable. You're expecting and intending <laughs> for your day to suck. You're intending to feel terrible all day long, to feel tired, to not have enough energy, and, and so on and so on. And we know what the result of that is. It's chaos emotionally in your home. It's chaos emotionally in your being. It's chaos in your relationships. That is the result of a negative intention. So the very first thing my clients learn is how to create a powerful intention that gives you the result that you want. And the reason why we do it in my transformational program is because if we don't interrupt the trauma pattern, we can't fix it. You have no, no perspective. So step one is I've got to interrupt that pattern. So I'm going to tell you the three qualities that you need for your intention to shift from this kind of unconscious negative creation mode to one that is uh, creative, intentional, positive, and gives you what you want instead of what you don't want. Okay, you guys with me? All right, awesome. Lori says, I'm going to work on worthiness this year. I'm going to own my worthiness this year. Okay, with me. All right. So, number one, a conscious intention is one that states what you want in the present tense as if it's already here now. As if it's already here now. Why is this important? Because when you're lit, before you understand, when you're living in a trauma response, you don't have authority over yourself, over your brain. You're not in charge of your brain. Your brain's just thinking thoughts and you're, you're reacting to them. Okay, so it's this like disembodied state. And, and because it's not, it's because, you know, it's, it doesn't feel safe to be in your body. It doesn't feel safe to be in the moment. I have a lot of compassion for that. It's really hard to live that way. But so like, why not change it? Let's just change it. So a conscious intention is one that states what you want in the present tense as if it is already here. I'll give you an example. So recently I was working with a client who felt she, she, she had a lot of patterning and a lot of conditioning around feeling like this is all my fault. I, I can't, I'm such a, I'm screwing up. I'm a fail, I feel like a failure as a mom. It's just emotional tension and mess with my kids and I know it's coming from me because I feel so negative and I'm stuck and, I can't, and we're breaking that pattern and so we had to rewrite that and create a really powerful interrupter, a really powerful intention for her. And what came through for that is I'm a blessing to my family and my family is a blessing to me. 
You're welcome to borrow this one. I'm a blessing to my family, and my family is a blessing to me. Now, if you're not, if you're doing this work on your own, and you're not supported in it, you're just here learning, learning some facts, learning some techniques. What is possible is that you might say this intention, and then you, you're, you may be like, it's, but it's, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a blessing to my family, and they're not a blessing to me. I'm angry all the time. So if that happens, and it might happen, there is deeper work to be done. Come and do that work with me. There's deeper work to be done. There are things that need to be moved and rewritten and resolved. There's emotional blockages in the way, most likely. And that is exactly the work we do in Awakened Motherhood. So when you create your intention from your desire, choose something that your brain doesn't quite argue with or shoot down immediately. It doesn't have to be 100% true, but you want to... You want to language something. You want to verbalize and vocalize it out loud. We did this in the challenge too. Like say it out loud. I am a blessing to my family and my family is a blessing to me. Then just listen. And if you participate in the challenge, you, you know these tools. And then you listen to your body. Then you, you feel what comes up. If you, if that's feels like I can't do that, that's too big, then you're just going to aim smaller. You're just going to go, um, I am um, I am a good mom. If you don't feel like a good mom, don't do that. Um, I, I am here and present for my family every day. I'm showing up for my life as fully as I can. Choose whatever you want. But let it be something that you can get behind. Okay, you want to be able to get behind it. So criteria number one is about bringing the locus of control into yourself, into your body, and, and, and really speaking it through your voice. So if I'm feeling powerless and overwhelmed and life sucks and it's shitting on me every day, sorry, then I'm going to be like, it's your fault. And if you guys would stop doing that, I could be happy. And the problem is I don't have support. And the problem is none of my family lives nearby. That's the problem. The problem, if we view the problem as outside of us, there will never be, there will never be an escape from it. You can run and you can run and you can move and you can be near family and you can hire someone to help you and you can do all these things and you will never feel like it's enough and you will never feel supported. How do I know? I've been doing this for 18 years. I've had enough clients. I've had enough people that I've helped to know that you can try to outrun negativity and it will always find you. Why? Because it's coming from inside of here and wherever you go, you take yourself with you. So until you change that and you you rewrite that and you transform that, then the end result does not change. How you feel in your baseline of your mood, your mental health does not change. Okay, is that part clear? Okay, so you want to first state your intention coming from you in the first person and in the present tense. Got it? So those are the requirements for the first piece. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. So you don't want to be like, oh, I want to be. It's like, I am. I am. I am worthy because I am. I am deserving of this beautiful life. I am. I'm deserving of all the things that I want, whatever those are. All right. Criteria number two. So the second thing is a powerful intention comes from you in your perspective, not from an, not from a circumstance. It, you know, I just mentioned a minute ago, also, it can't come from another person. My intention is um, my partner is um, taking such good care of me that I never have to worry again. Not an intention that's powerful. <laughs> my intention is my children are always cooperating and following my directions. Not an intention you can control. So don't waste your time on this. Go straight to the piece of I am creating this 
because it is a desire of my own. I'm creating this reality, this intention, this, uh, this um, truth, because it is a desire of my own. So it has to come from your perspective in the first person. And you got to get it through your head that no one's coming to rescue you. And honestly, it's not God's job or the job of the universe to save you. You're here to save yourself with the decision to shift your life by shifting yourself. And everyone's heard the verse, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, or if you ever read the Bible or not, but you hear it enough, it's in consciousness, collective consciousness, that God helps those who help themselves. And, and that's what I'm talking about with the second criteria. A powerful intention puts you in the driver's seat, puts you in control of your life to command that loving support from the universe to call in and call up yourself as a person, if you are a person of faith, to say, I believe that this, I believe I'm worthy of this because nothing in the universe or the quantum field or God, him or herself can reflect to you your worthiness, what you're deserving of, unless you are willing to accept it, to state it, to bet on it, to invest in it, no one else could come in to help you there, including real life humans in your family as well. Same thing. You doubt your value. You doubt your worthiness. Boy, they're right there too. Ignoring your directions, criticizing you. It happens. So if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Kids don't take you seriously. Not their fault, honestly. It, they're just reflecting to you your low self-worth or your self-doubt that you really can do this and you really are the best mom for them, which you are, by the way, whether you have woken up to that fact or not. All right, with me so far? Tell me if you're with me. If you can do both of those things, just say a yes in the comments. And then we're going to go to criteria three, the third rule of creating a very powerful intention is that it has to become, it won't be now or today, when you begin it, it has to become familiar to you. You have to familiarize yourself to it. Why? Because the conditioning that you've been doing up until this point is so deeply ingrained. The thoughts of I'm not worth it or I'm not enough or I didn't do enough or there's so much I can't, I can't, I can't. Those are so practiced. You probably inherited them, and since two or three, it's been embedded. And you've been firing along those synapses for all of those years, however old you are, right? So I want you to think about this when you shift the thing that you are enforcing, buying into, deciding for yourself, such as a thought like, I'm a blessing to my family. My family is a blessing to me. What people, you know, and this is so powerful for my clients, like what, what they don't realize some of you are here who've been through the 12 week program. Like I know, I remember, you know, um, uh, some of you in the beginning where you were and it's sort of like, I, I'm going to say this and it's going to change things for me. Like, you know, skepticism, <laughs> the judging mind goes like, that's ridiculous. I've tried that before. Well, yes, you may have tried it before and as far as what I can give you here in this live stream today, what I'll just say is that intentions fall flat for many, many reasons, but typically they fall flat because people do not embody them. They don't do enough repetition, enough conditioning, or they do the repetition, they do the conditioning, they sink their teeth in, they buy into it, and then what happens is you try to get familiar with it and your brain loves familiarity. So you need to condition it. You need to get familiar with it. You got to kind of bond with that intention until it truly becomes like belief status. But what happens is people start to, to get into that zone of I'm familiarizing this. I'm starting to really believe it. And then what comes up beneath this from, from beneath the surface, this huge awareness of the trauma patterns 
that created the negativity to begin with, that created the unworthiness to begin with, that created the limited mindset to begin with. So now, you know, this is really getting deep, right? You can tell. What happens is you start to push the boundary on your your unworthiness, your undeservingness. Going, no, I am. I can't. I can't. I am. I, I, I am worthy of appreciation and love. I am... I'm worthy of joy. Obviously, of course I am. I'm worthy of respect. I'm worthy of freedom. I'm worthy of emotional health. I'm worthy of mental health. I'm worthy of feeling stable and calm. I'm worthy of feeling that that core, that safe center inside of me. I'm worthy of feeling like I get to enjoy my life. I want that to be my reality. So if I want that to be my reality, I'm going to pull my attention from there. And then I'm going to familiarize it. And then what's going to happen for most of you who try this, who have not worked with me before and done my 12-week intensive, is that you're going to bump into the thing or things in the way of you progressing once you hit this point. So the third point is familiarize it. Make it anything your brain can familiarize will become true. You guys have been here long enough on this planet bumping into other people to know that we don't all believe the same things. We don't all hold the same truths. What is true in my bones for me can be completely different from what my friend's inner truth is. And we can still love each other and we can still hang out together. And same is true for my my husband been together over 20 years we can hold different things as just fundamentally true for us and we can still love each other and we can still support each other so what you familiarize what you condition becomes your truth that becomes your belief that becomes what supports you yeah uh uh, karis um i see your comment here embodiment is my biggest challenge i feel like i have an embodiment blocker so great um thank you for this this really important comment so you know This is to the point of what I was just saying. When you try to familiarize something and you go, I want that to be my reality. I want to be a loving, understanding mom. I don't want to blow up anymore. I don't want to care about the small stuff. I don't want to worry anymore. I just want to be like, just here for the ride. I want to trust and know everything's working out for me. I want to own that. I want to embody it in my belief. I want to integrate it down my spine. I want to believe it in my brain and in my body. And I want to, and so what happens is then you bring that to the forefront, but all the other uh, backlog of emotional junk in the channels is still there. So all of the old trauma, all of the wounding, all of the contradictory beliefs, all of that is like a cluttered closet cluttering up your body, your space, your capacity to fully upgrade your identity and own and reflect that new intention to the fullest. Okay, does that make sense? So that clutter inside, that emotional, I was like when, when I'm on clarity calls with people, I explain it as sort of um, clogged pipes. It's like emotionally your channels are, are backlogged with all of this old kind of either trauma experiences, past pain, junky beliefs that are not moving you forward, things that hold you back, things that cause you to keep kind of self-harming with thoughts, negative thoughts, or hurting your children with the negativity or the blowing up or whatever it is. And so in, in, in order to embody, and some of you may be at this point, and I'll tell you, um, really what needs to be done for that in a moment, but in order to embody, there are other steps that you need to take. And there is support that you need to have to do that because that isn't work we can do alone in a vacuum. You didn't get there alone. You got there by, you know, growing up in your family of origin. Uh, You know, this belief in this teaching from from this parent or that parent. Um, When you do these three things, your intention will become more familiar to you if you really do stick with it and and create the repetition. And an intention is what will make you more responsible for what you think. And so how I think informs how I feel. And this is so crucial to get how you think informs how you feel. So your intention is going to create for you what you think or what you think about. And it's also going to highlight for you all of the ways that you contradict that all day long with negative thoughts, with 
undeserving unworthiness kind of beliefs and thoughts and perspectives or other people aren't worthy or deserving, whichever, whether you're projecting it out or in, same, same, two sides of the same coin. It's the unworthiness. So, and you're not loving yourself when you do that. You know, you're, you're hurting yourself. You're not loving yourself. A lot of people, you know, reach out to me. I, I want to, I want to get really good at loving myself. I don't even know what that means. Like I, I definitely don't love myself, but I don't know how it looks or how it feels when I do love myself. I understand that. I completely understand that. That is a part of the journey into ownership of your health and well-being. And it is one of the outcomes of our our 12-week intensive program. The, The things that come up once we start working with and implementing those intentions along with other techniques that are very powerful, what happens is we get to see it comes in the light of day and we get to see, oh my God, this is what's been in the way for me. Now I can help somebody move it. Now I can help someone to really go through step-by-step process of dissolving what is painful, what is, um, what is blocking you, dissolving that, and then embodying the new beautiful truths and, um, and beliefs that come up when we start getting really honest with ourselves. And you know, I can tell you from experience, like not once have we ever uncovered that someone actually isn't worthy. It doesn't happen. Not once have we ever uncovered that someone actually has good reason to doubt themselves. They really can't trust themselves. That isn't what happens. What happens is you realize, oh my God, all this, all this self-doubt and uncertainty is just the worst kind of junky patterning from generations past. I can actually just peel that away. We can dissolve that. We can transmute that. We can re- rearrange that one and rewrite that one. And what happens when we then heal that, that emotional um, um, pain underneath that is empowerment, is you realizing you really are the owner of your life. You will know that, and you will never lose it, that you're the thinker of your thoughts and you're the feeler of your feelings, and it is completely 1,000% up to you what you do with that. It's like, in my experience, the greatest gift that people squander. It really is. We We can create from our thoughts and our emotions such a loving, secure, safe, beautiful, joyful uh, uh, s- dance party vibe whenever we want it like this. And we can live there with our kids, being that kind of leader and example to them, and they embody it, and they embody it so much faster than it took us to figure it out because they're still little. You know, even through teenage, like they just absorb so quickly. So there's nothing that can't be undone. There's nothing that can't be rewritten. And your kids are never too old to get this. If you begin today with an intention, you are going to see that you put your foot on the gas pedal of that and things start to kind of move for you. You feel it. You might feel it in your body, your emotions. You might hear it in your thoughts. You might have different dreams. It's very powerful to do this. And if you're hearing this and you you are like, yes, you know, and I know intentions are powerful because I know that I create uh, my, my, life and what's what um what i get to enjoy and all these things if you want to break free from the trauma patterns that you bump into then if you want to really um take those next steps of resolving for good overwhelm and just putting that down and not doing struggle mode survival mode anymore and you're ready to invest in that you're ready to show up for it you're ready to commit to that then just book a clarity call Book a clarity call on the calendar. The link for that is www.honorjanetsky.com forward slash call. I'm happy to get on a call with you. I'm going to drop the link here in the comments. There it goes. And, um, and I'd be happy to speak with you about your, um, your vision, what you want to kind of be rid of and clear, and then what you want to create going forward.